the law you're here. That madman was out of control. You were right to put him down. He was too far. And what about you? You are. I'm not hurt. You've put down the worst riot in our history. Rid we don't have a moment to lose. We're gonna have to work. We've lost all contact with Earth. It's been two years ago, the Earth Directorate's frigate disappeared. So we've got to make do on our... We must find a way to carry on. You mean... You sound frightened, Miss... We're alone, Captain. That's all I... Yes, we do have a long road ahead of... You're the reason I'm still standing here today. The board will survive because of you. And as the board... It's time we carried out the program. I support your decision wholeheartedly. Now more than ever before, Halcyon needs strong. We're on our own now. Earth. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The riots in Tartarus ended in a total victory for the Board. Without any significant threats to challenge their power, the Board asserted their control over the colony. The lifetime employment program began immediately, and the people of Halcyon did exactly what they were expected to do. They obeyed. Sophia Akande converted the labyrinth from a prison to a processing center. She jettisoned the original colonists out of the hope and transformed the ship into a massive storage facility. One by one, the workers of Halcyon surrendered themselves to the program. They arrived with their families and their friends, their colleagues and their neighbors. And then, one by one, they marched into their stasis chambers. As the workers of Halcyon slept in their hibernation chambers, their settlements became ghost towns, left behind by the board to be reclaimed by nature. Only Byzantium remained, a shining beacon of civilization in an otherwise abandoned colony. The people of Byzantium spent the rest of their days gorging themselves on their stockpile of resources. As for the workers of Halcyon, they never felt the effects of the collapse. They never felt anything at all. The board's focus on Byzantium closed the door on much of Sanjar's civil liberties movement. As the last few townships withered away, MSI had little room to grow. Ever the savvy businessman, however, Sanjar pivoted and established Stellar Bay as the colony's supplier of luxury seafood. Catering to the elite, MSI was allowed to continue operations as a member of the Halcyon board and became more successful than Sanjar could ever have dreamed. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. Over the years, the ruins of Edgewater caused irreversible environmental damage to the landscape of Emerald Vale, owing largely to the presence of toxic compounds in the town's building materials. As for Edgewater's former workers, their remains provided a source of nourishment for the region's fauna, leading to an explosion in the Sprat population. The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide Medevitt's camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, Adelaide's camp grew into a well-established town. 
It was only a matter of time before the adjutant sent her troops to wipe out Adelaide's town. Only one deserter escaped the massacre. He was believed to be carrying the last remaining copy of Adelaide's research. The bounty on his head remains unclaimed. While the groundbreaker remained mechanically stable, the changing times forced Junlei Tennyson to make some difficult calls on behalf of her community. The work of maintaining independence was an uphill climb, and she found herself caving to bad faith compromises with the board. Time will tell if the groundbreaker can endure. As smaller settlements were swallowed up and their workers drafted into the lifetime employment program, Byzantium continued to thrive. While its citizens lived in decadence and extravagance, a small cadre of scientists worked to solve the nutrition crisis that threatened Halcyon. No one else much noticed the townships that disappeared from the map or the luxuries that slowly lost their luster year by year. As the board reasserted control over Halcyon, Felix came to realize that his life as an upstart rebel had come to an end. The board's victory crushed any hope for a grand revolution across Halcyon. And so Felix, once again, found himself without a purpose in life. And so, disillusioned with his former boss and with nowhere left to go, Felix left his crew without saying goodbye. He was never heard from again. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease, telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. As the board began to roll out their lifetime employment program, Parvati was plagued by dreams of freezing to death. She began taking increasingly longer shore leaves, and she eventually disappeared from the unreliable entirely. The board never knew what became of her, and under the adjutant's orders, they never tried to find out. Parvati was afforded a measure of peace and left to her own devices. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, an MSI subsidiary of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest, and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. Adjutant Sophia Akande was instrumental in executing the lifetime employment program. Following the death of Chairman Rockwell, Sophia Akande served as the royal adjutant to her former freelancer, now the most powerful person in Halcyon. With Halcyon's workers suspended in a state of hibernation, starvation and chaos are problems of the past. The Lifetime Employment Program succeeded in its goals, but that success came at a price. The Halcyon of today is nothing at all like the colony of yesteryear. Power remains concentrated in Byzantium, but all the colony's resources serve the lifestyle of the elite, thereby transforming Halcyon into one of the smallest and most exclusive colonies in the system. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and proved yourself the most capable leader left in the colony. With Sophia Akande as your adjutant, you returned in triumph to Byzantium. All of Halcyon was yours. In time, you demonstrated a talent for leadership that far surpassed your predecessor, Chairman Rockwell. With your steady hand, you guided Halcyon through the turbulent years to follow 
and helped ensure the colony's survival. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.